Hi there, hope this video finds you well. Uh, I am so glad to be at the end of this course with our final reflection, uh, reflective assignment. Uh, thank you, Professor July, for such a great course. Even though it's tense at times, I know it only prepares us for the next degree, right? When we get into master's. Uh, my initial thoughts on community health nursing um, were originally my first thought uh, was community-based nursing is treating the individual or family in an institutionalized setting as opposed to public health nursing and treating the population as a whole, such as a CDC. And that is kind of correct, which it is. Uh, but my thoughts on community health nursing now is to educate on health promotion within the community to families and individuals to reduce or prevent illness by making known available resources such as nutrition, uh, nutrition housing, or employment. Reflection on self, well, who am I? I am a 41-year-old mom uh, to four beautiful daughters. Um, I currently have my associate, associate's degree in nursing through Mott Community College. Um, it's been two years now to the date, August 3rd, that I actually passed the NCLEX and officially became a registered nurse. Um, I am now furthering my degree uh, to deepen my you know, knowledge into nursing and graduate with my uh, BSN in December and I'm 98% of the way. I just gotta keep going, I'm almost there. Um, I'm so excited. Currently, I work at Symphony of Linden, uh, formerly Keratoans of Linden, a skilled rehab center. And uh, it's been great, I'm so excited. Um, that's a good stuff up on the horizon. Um, what are my values? I believe in being positive minded, being optimistic. I value honesty, teamwork, integrity, respect, dependability, and hard work. Um, nursing is a very hard and demanding field that is mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausting. And But it is so worth it, especially when you have a heart for it. Um, you need your teammate to help get you through the shift when you've got admissions, discharges, wound care, stuff goes crazy you cannot do it by yourself it is too much and i really appreciate teamwork and i value my teammates big time um what have i learned about myself through this experience um through this experience i've learned that i can work under pressure completing assignments for work and school while still being able to uh, provide for my daughters and while i strive to find balance i find it hard at times and a work in progress and i feel when reaching your goals, there really is no balance. You know, when you've got deadlines and you've got, you know, uh, goals and assignments to meet within a certain amount of time, whether through work or school, you know, it, it, it's that short-term sacrifice for the long-term result. Uh, and eventually I'm sure there'll be balance there, but right now I'm just doing the best that I can, right? Um, do I have more or less understanding or empathy than I did before this experience or semester? I still feel I may have a little bit more empathy, but nothing much has changed because I still have a big heart for nursing. I love nursing. Um, and I feel that after writing my global health paper on Sierra Leone, Africa, and the challenges and struggles faced by the residents of that country, uh, such as the high rates of infant, child, and maternal mortality rates uh, related to the lack of healthcare resources and uh, equipment and healthcare providers, it has given me a greater appreciation for life and healthcare in America. So often we take that for granted. Um, we are so lucky to have a safe roof over our heads, to have, you know, nice, uh, well, uh, a good um, sanitation, food, water, uh, working vehicles to get to and from work, you know, having the available resources to just drive a few miles and to be able to find some help. Um, everything's within a traveling distance, especially in this area, in the Grand Blanc area. Uh, in what ways, if any, has your sense of self, your values, your sense of community, your willingness to serve others, and your self-confidence, self-esteem been impacted or altered through this experience semester? I feel that my sense of self values and sense of community to help serve others still remains the same. I believe in helping one another, especially if you are able to do so, and which is why I feel is my calling as a nurse. Uh, how has this experience challenged stereotypes or prejudice you have had 
any realizations, insights, especially strong lessons learned or half glimpsed. Well, I personally feel that if you work in the healthcare field, there is no room to be prejudiced or racist. You're working with all groups, races, ethnicities, cultures. I, I mean, America, what makes America is that it's a big melting pot of everybody, um, of all cultures, all nations. And, you know, we all believe in one thing, equality and freedom for all, you know, um, just be a good person, you know, always trying to do the right thing. Uh, will these experiences change the way you act or think in the future? Um, after completing the course, Nursing 412 Community Health Nursing for RNs, research in healthcare is essential to be able to provide evidence-based healthcare practices for effective results. As I further my degree in nursing, it will deepen my understanding when working with my patients to provide evidence-based, culturally competent care. Uh, reflection on overarch, uh, arching issues. Uh, were you able to identify any problems that influenced health of community members? I feel that the COVID-19 pandemic affected the population, not only to the community or the state nation, it was a global impact uh, on a global scale. Uh, businesses and schools were shut down and people were mandated to quarantine to reduce the spread of the virus. Um, as a result, there was a divide between essential and non-essential workers. And whether a person was deemed essential or non-essential, problems identified within these two groups included higher rates of anxiety and depression for the healthcare workers who had to go to work no matter what, not knowing what their day was going to be like. Were they going to, you know, contract the virus, you know, um, bring it home to their family? Uh, or if you were a non-essential worker, not being able to go to work. And if you were a business owner, not making enough on unemployment to even pay for your business. So a lot of businesses did shut down because they couldn't even afford to pay their payment. Um, so it was tough, I feel, for everyone still involved in this pandemic. And I hope that things really get back to normal soon. Um, from your experience, are you able to identify any underlying or overarching issues that influence any identified problems? I work with older, with the population older adults, 65 years and older in a skilled rehab uh, nursing facility. I feel that this has had an impact on this population, especially for the new admits and having to be isolated for at least, you know, 14 days, uh, increasing the risk of depression and, uh, skin and impaired skin um, due to being in their room and immobile, uh, lack of socialization. Uh, what could be done to change the situation? Um, I feel that my, uh, I feel that, you know, Symphony has done a really good job in the way how they've handled this. Um, they were probably one of the first ones to, you know, go on lockdown mode when we first heard about the coronavirus. Um, I feel that they still try to do, you know, keep it interactive for the guest, even if they're doing activities from the hallway, you know, either, you know, activities going down the hallway, you know, playing bingo or some kind of something fun and keeping social distance and everyone wearing the mask. Um, they also encourage video chats where they schedule time with activities, you know, to sit on time. So that way, if for some reason the older adults can't, you know, work their phone to do a video chat, you know, someone can go in there and help them. Um, they've also done video uh, window visits where a uh, family can schedule time and they can actually, you know, communicate through a window and stuff, um, but still keeping safe uh, distance. Um, I think one of the most awesomest things is um, they did a love parade and all of the families decorated the cars, they drove around the facility you know, and um, the, res the the guests were actually outside and they were able to wave to their loved ones and, you know, just to boost spirits and, you know, so that way, you know, it, it trying to make, you know, the best they can with, you know, the situation at hand. Um, how will this alter your future behaviors, attitudes, and career? Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown how vulnerable we are as a society. As a registered nurse and future nurse practitioner, there is no such thing as too much compassion or to speak up as a patient advocate for those under your care. Uh, your voice is needed. Uh, how is a lar uh, issue or agency or serving impacted by what is going on in the larger political social sphere? 
I feel that our facility was impacted by a decrease in patient census and the longer than expected restrictions that we're still under. Uh, and the larger political social sphere, you either stand with the governor or you are against her with the reasoning behind her decisions. I personally feel she is doing the best she can for the greater good. What does the future hold? I hope that we get back to normal as soon as possible and open up schools and businesses when it is safe to do so. Uh, reflection on leadership concepts. Uh, provide examples of taking leadership roles or responsibilities. Describe how knowledge and skills related to leadership were integrated into any of the nursing 412 written assignments, simulated experiences, or extended learning hours completed. Um, examples of taking leadership roles or responsibilities include staying over after work, making sure that my teammates are okay, um, especially when they've been swamped with admissions now that, you know, some of the restrictions have kind of been lifted and we've been getting more senses, uh, more admits. Or encouraging your CNAs to take a break, you know, and telling that it's okay to take a few minutes, you know, and telling your nursing, you know, coworkers, you know, hey, go get a quick bite to eat, you know. Um, sometimes we forget because we get so into work that, you know, it's hard to just kind of, you know, you're like, yep, I'll get to that. I'll go to the bathroom. I'll get something in a quick bit and you just never do. Sometimes, I mean, that happens to me a lot and I kind of got, you know, take my own advice, right? Um, after viewing the webinar on the total healthcare worker, um, it is extremely important to take care of your team to decrease rates of burnout so they can in turn provide the best care to the patients. Um, I feel once, nurses get burnt out, they're not able to give their best. And then, or even, you know, your CNAs, for example, and, you know, it, it's, you know, it's not good for everybody involved. It's, it's really not. Um, describe how the experiences related to this nursing 412 course increased your understanding of how nurses and leadership roles positively influence population-based care. Nurses and leadership roles can positively influence population-based care through education and making known available resources to those in need. Examples include presenting a topic at a community center or public library on cardiovascular disease or diabetes to raise awareness and reduce rates of disease. Uh, it can also include helping those who are unemployed and directing them to social work or food pantries for extra assistance. Describe the level of leadership skills that you have witnessed in your community-based settings or professional professional workplace and lessons learned from those experiences. Uh, levels of leadership skills that I have witnessed in the professional workplace is when the director of nursing has had to work on the floor due to low staffing or people calling in after already working a full day in the office. Um, she technically did not have to do that, but she did. And I felt that that was, you know, you know, I feel no matter what your position is, you should always, you know, I mean, that's just what leadership is, I would think. You just, you just do it. I mean, because that's what, that's what you're supposed to do as, as for leadership. Um, I just found it awesome. Uh, lessons served from this experience and a goal to focus on as an assistant director of nursing, which I have recently been promoted to, is to examine the current staff available and evaluate how dependable they are and to provide education accordingly. Um, I feel a lot of times they may not realize or maybe we just may not, you know, especially with the COVID pandemic and everything, it's added extra issues on that, um, that sometimes, you know, we may tend to let things slide, but we can't because obviously it affects the staff, affecting the patients. Um, I feel when hiring, hosting a job fair is a great idea to be able to meet potential uh, employees for recruitment. Um, I feel a Zoom call would be great when interviewing and asking questions to see how they respond. Um, I think it'd be a great interview, especially now with our restrictions and stuff and it being safe. Um, once again, I want to thank you for your time. It's been a great experience and I wish you the best next semester. Bye.